Happy Monday, fifth grade. This is Miss Gibson coming with you with math review. So again, this is different from the math lessons that you guys will be doing. This is about all the review that we've been basically working on since we've left school and basically like the math review class that we'll have in school. So make sure you're on the correct packet for today. It says math review virtual learning packet, Monday, April 6th. Make sure you have pencils. Make sure you have your blank paper so you can do all the problems out on the side. All right. So now you can pause the video and get started on your work. Welcome back. So of course, the first part was basically like a fact power, but with different types of things. So make sure you are checking your work as you are going through this, okay? So you can go ahead and pause the video and check your work. All right, so if you are having a problem with multiplying or dividing by base 10, if you are having a problem with adding fractions or multiplying fractions or adding decimals, please reach out to your teachers so that you guys can go over this more in depth if you are still struggling with these review problems. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next piece. So, Debbie had 928 quarters. If it costs eight quarters for each Coke from a Coke machine, how many could she buy? All right. So realize that my work right here, I need to basically do division. The reason why I'm doing division is because since it costs eight quarters for one Coke and I have 928 quarters, I need to figure out how many Cokes I can buy if they're all eight quarters. So I did basically repeat a subtraction with bigger groups. I did 928 divided by eight. The first group I did was subtracting 800 because I already know eight times 100 is 800. So that leaves me with 128 left over. And then I subtracted another big group of 80, which is eight times 10. And then I have 48 left over. And then I have 48. And then I did six times eight for 48, which leads me to buy 116 Coca-Colas with 928 quarters. All right. Moving to the next one, an architect was building a hotel. I'm just going to zoom in a bit just so you guys can see what's going on. All right. Okay. So an architect was building a hotel downtown. He bought 399 lamps to put in the rooms. If each room gets not seven lamps, how many rooms does the hotel have? All right. So I'm going to talk through the steps. It's kind of... Um, light on the page. So there are 399 rooms. I know that each room gets seven lamps. So again, I'm doing division as well. So I do a 399 divided by seven. Now I did a strategy where I made a multiples list on the side. So I did seven times 10 equals 70, seven times five equals 35, seven times two equals 14. Now this is going to come into play when I'm trying to track a larger group first in order to solve my problem. So I subtracted 350 first because I know that seven times five is 35. So that means seven times 50 would be 350. Okay. So I did 399 minus that set of group, that big group, 350, which leads me to 49. And I know seven times seven equals 49. So that's going to be 57 rooms that get seven lamps in each room. All right. So if you are having problems with dividend and divisor or making sure that you are multi subtracting big enough groups to get to your answer, please reach out, text, email, gchat your teachers, and ask for more clarity on these types of problems. The next thing we're working on is solving using algorithms. These are not the regular type. These are both problems have decimal points in them. So I made sure to remove the decimal point and then solve as if they're regular problems and then add them back, okay? So realize I added them back based off of how many place values I have behind the decimal point in my original factors. So I have one decimal point here, so I know that I need to have one place value in my answer. I have one decimal point in my first factor and two decimal points after the decimal point. Two, sorry, two place values after the decimal point in my second factor. So I need to have three numbers here. Go ahead and pause the video and check your work. All 
All right. So again, make sure you are checking your work with these and make sure that it, you are starring anything that you're having a problem with, especially with this um, multiplication with decimal points, because I know a lot of us kind of struggled with it in school. It's okay. And you always can use this practice, reach out to your teachers to conference with them as well. Okay. We can't see the work that you're doing. So you have to conference with us because not all of these problems will be on math review. I mean, on the math review exit ticket, I should say. All right. And then, of course, a good way to get to your answer is to always estimate. So you should be writing your estimation down and seeing where you can get, how close you're getting to your answer. All right, let's scroll down. So this one, you are working on expressions using exponents, okay? So the example right here, it says 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 2 to the fifth power. So this fifth power represents how many times I just repeatedly multiplied two to itself. So that's why it has two to the fifth power because I have five twos and I multiplied them all the way by five times. So I did each problem out for all six of them. And then I wrote down my answer to the exponent. So you go, go ahead, pause the video and check your work. Again, if you are confused on this, star it. Make sure you're messaging your teacher because we cannot read your minds and we cannot see your work unless you tell us what's going on with you. All right, let's go to the last section. So, number one on this page. There are eight water bottles and each bottle is three-fourths filled with water. If we pour all the water together, how many water bottles can be filled up? So I know that I do not have basically filled water bottles and I know that we can take all this water bottle and refill these water bottles in order to see how many we can fill up if we have eight. So clearly I need to repeatedly add three fourths. And of course, if you're repeatedly adding something, then you are also multiplying. So eight times three fourths is the equation for this. You're gonna have 24 fourths, which equals six filled water bottles, all right? So this is, again, just connecting to whole numbers, multiplying it by a fraction, and then getting to a final answer. The second one, at a birthday party, there are 15 children. Each child will eat 3 sixteenths of a pizza. How many pizzas should the host order? So realize you need to figure out the total amount of pizza slices that will be eaten by the children in order to figure out how many pizzas that the host needs to order in order for all these kids to have the 3 sixteenths of a pizza. So again, one child is eating 3 sixteenths. I need to figure out how many 15 children will eat. So I need to multiply again. So 15 times 3 sixteenths, that's going to get me to 45 over 16. Now the final answer for that is 2 and 3 sixteenths, but this isn't the amount of pizzas I can order. You can't order 3 sixteenths of a pizza, right? So you definitely have to round up to figure out that the total amount of pizzas that the host will order is three pizzas because you can't go to two because two is technically not feeding all the children that 3 sixteenths of a pizza. So in order for each of the children out of the 15 to get 3 sixteenths, you need to order three pizzas, all right? So again, if you are having any problems with any of the work that we were reviewing today, make sure that one, if you're not taking out your notebooks, take them out and then try to refresh your memory and go back and try them again. Or two, make sure that if you already did those steps and watched the video and still feel the need that you are confused, then make sure you're reaching out to your teacher and telling them that you were confused. All right. So Class code for today is going to be noodles. So make sure you are typing this in your exit ticket because that's the only way you can turn it in. And then after that, these are the three problems that you guys will be working on for today. So make sure you are using this video to help you out, using your notes and using your work. And then of course, you're doing all of these three quiz, th quiz um, questions on blank piece of paper and then making sure you're putting your answers in Google Classroom for your exit ticket for math review. All right. Happy Monday. Have a good day and a good week. Bye.